Hi there, this is Optics Lesson 6, and this one is Diffraction Gratings. So first of all, let's start with a recap of a part of last lesson. I want you to sketch the intensity against position graphs for single slit diffraction and then double slit diffraction. If you want to pause and have a go. So single, tip, uh, single slit diffraction. So you should have done intensity against position. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, the central fringe is much brighter than the subsequent fringes. And it's also twice the width. So that's one done. And then for double slit diffraction, we've got intensity against position. And the fringes are all the same width. And the intensity, I should touch the axis, and the intensity doesn't drop off very much at all. So your graph might look something like this. And then just indicate that these are all, in fact, the same width. Hopefully that went okay, that recap. Let's move on. Transmission diffraction grating. A transmission grating, transmission diffraction grating, consists of a glass or plastic slide with many closely spaced slits ruled onto it. You could typically get 500 per millimetre. So two examples, 500 lines per millimetre or 100 lines per millimetre. So what I want you to do First of all, there's a small amount. A CD or DVD disc acts as a reflection diffraction grating. Just a real life example. What I would like to do is to calculate the distance between two individual lines for both of these cases. So if you want to pause and attempt this one, please. So let's get the distance between two individual lines. Sorry if you heard that, that was my extractor fan going berserk. So to get the distance between two individual lines on this first one, we need to do a millimetre. Or one times 10 to the minus three. And then divide it by the number of lines per millimetre. So on this one, we'll just divide by 500. And that gives us two times 10 to the minus six metres. So that's the distance between two individual lines on this grating. So on this one, it's the same technique. So it's a millimetre, one times 10 to the minus three. This time just divided by 100. And that's 1 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. So that's how you calculate the distance between two individual lines. And you'll see when we do some exam style questions that this is very a very important part of the, of the process to answer the questions. So let's move on. So grating a monochromatic line. If you want to take some notes, remember to pause if you need to. So this would be an example. So when a parallel beam of monochromatic light, remember monochromatic single wavelength, is incident normally, normally just means at 90 degrees to this filter. So it comes in at 90 degrees to that. Uh, with the grating, the light is transmitted in certain directions only. And these are these orders. This happens because the light is diffracted by each slit in the grating. Diffracted, remember, just means the light to spread out. And secondly, the diffracted light from adjacent slits reinforces only in a few directions. In all of the directions, cancellation occurs. So these orders are examples of complete constructive interference, which is linking back to the, the wave knowledge that we should already have. So the central beam is referred to as the zero order beam. And it is the is in the same direction as the incident beam. So passes straight through, no change in direction. If the transmitted beams are numbered outwards from the zero number beam. So on this one we've got first order, second order, and third order, and it's reflected about the zero order axis. 
So the pattern of beams is symmetric about the zero order beam. Uh, what happens if we use white light instead of monochromatic? So we've looked at this before for the double slit diffraction, which we did in the previous lesson. So each wavelength produces its own set of lines. The zero order beam is white. And the other beams are spectra, with red showing the greatest angles. So this is another example of blue on the inside and red on the outside. Similar to the double slit diffraction. Diffraction grating equation. So you actually need to know where this equation comes from. So we've got the, this is a magnification of two individual slits. So we've got D and what happens is the light is diffracted. So I'll do my best to explain this. Let's try to get that a bit more parallel. And what we get is a, an image. So there's a screen some distance away in this region where I've written screen. Essentially what happens is this, this beam one travels a further distance than beam two. So let me just show you this. So this angle here, theta, let's look at this bit first. So this path, this is, this is an extra path difference that's traveled by, by beam one. And if we think about it, this is D. So this will be the hypotenuse as it's opposite this right angle. This is opposite. This bit here is opposite. So this component here is D sine theta. So that's the extra path difference traveled by beam one. And for constructive interference, so for constructive interference, the path difference, the extra path traveled by ray, by ray of light one, d sine theta must be equal to a whole number or whole integer of wavelengths. And that is where this equation comes from. D sine theta equals n lambda. So D is the distance between two individual lines. The theta is the angle that's on the left. N is the order. So it will be order 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. And lambda is the wavelength of light. For constructive interference then, if we have a whole integer number of wavelengths, we get something like this. So that might be one wave. So that's one, two. So as you can see, two waves. So what that, what that would mean is that when they start, they start in phase. And obviously for constructive interference, as we already know, they need to be coherent. So that means the same frequency and constant phase relationship. Hopefully that's cleared up. So I'll get the equation down and then we're going to utilize it. So here's a question. You can just pause and have a go. Or you can use this one as an example. So calculate the angle of the first order beam when red light of wavelength 650 nanometers is incident on a diffraction grating that has 200 lines per millimeter. So the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the distance between two individual lines. So it's 200 lines per millimeter. So we need to do one millimeter. So one times 10 to the minus three divided by 200. And that gives us five times 10 to the minus six meters. Then we can just use the equation, the d sine theta equals n lambda and rearrange to find the angle so d sine theta is equal to n lambda. So theta will be equal to the inverse sine 
of n lambda over d. So n lambda over d. And it's time to put some numbers in. So we've got inverse sine. N is 1 because it's the first order beam. Lambda is given 650 nanometers, so 650 times 10 to the minus 9. Divided by the distance d, which we just calculated, the distance between two individual lines, 5 times 10 to the minus 6. So that gives us an angle theta of 7.5 degrees. Let's try the next one. So we're going to pause and have a go. Calculate the wavelength of light. That should be that, apologies. That has a second order angle of 30 degrees when used with a diffraction gradient of 500 lines per millimeter. So we want to find wavelength this time. So first of all, we need to find D again. So that's 500 lines per millimeter. So let's do a millimeter, one times 10 to the minus three, divided by 500. So that gives us D, the separation between two individual lines of two times 10 to the minus six meters. Then we can use the D sine theta equals N lambda equation and rearrange to find lambda. So it's D sine theta equals N lambda. And then let's rearrange to get lambda. So the wavelength is simply D sine theta divided by N. So let's put some numbers in. So D is 2 times 10 to the minus 6. Multiply by sine 30. Which is simply a half. And then divided by the order. So the order is the second order. So divided by 2. So that gives us a wavelength that's equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 7. Or 500 times 10 to the minus 9. Which is 500 nanometers. Remember the range of light, visible light, is 400 to 700 nanometers. Let's try the next one. So if you think about this one, let's pause and have a go. A grating has 450 lines per millimeter. When the light of wavelength 750 nanometers passes through it, what is the highest order visible? So what we should do is go back to this image. Because we don't know the angle, or it appears that we don't know the angle. But th for the maximum order, the largest angle that we can actually see, or that we can actually use, is 90 degrees. So I'll show you how this one works. First of all, let's find D. So D would be... We've got to do a millimetre. Divided by 450 lines per millimetre. So that's 2.2 .2 recurring times 10 to the minus 6 metres. Then we need to do d sine theta equals n lambda. We said on the diagram that I showed you a moment ago that the maximum angle is 90. And if you do sine 90 in your calculator... If you do maths, you'll already know this, or you should do. Sine 90 is equal to 1. So our equation becomes D equals N lambda. So we can get N by doing D divided by the wavelength. So D is 2.2 .2 recurring times 10 to the minus 6 divided by a wavelength of 700 nanometers. So 700 times 10 to the minus 9. So that gives us an order of... 3.2. So the highest order that is visible is n equals 3. Just a note though, that's important. If, for example, the answer that you got for any given question was, say, 3.9, the answer is still 3. Mathematically, 3.9 would round to 4. However, Physically, n equals 4 does not exist, so the highest order would be n equals 3. So be careful of that one. So it could be n equals 4.7, the maximum order 
is n equals 4. So one more question like that. If you want to pause and have a go. How many beams are formed when blue light of wavelength 450 nanometers is used with a diffraction grating of 400 lines per millimeter? So let's find D. So D is equal to a millimeter. So 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Divided by 400 lines per millimeter. So that gives us 2.5 to the minus 6 meters. And again, we're finding out how many beams, so we want the maximum order. So sine of the angle is sine 90, which is 1. So we're just going to use D equals N lambda. And we just need to rearrange to get N. So N is equal to D, which we just calculated, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6. Divided by the wavelength of 450 times 10 to the minus 9. So that gives us the highest order visible of 5.5 recurring. Obviously, we know from the last question that it's n equals 5, because n equals 6 does not exist. However, how many beams are there? You need to remember back to the diagram, where we had the n equals 0, and then we had the n equals 1, 2, and 3 on either side. So in this instance, we would have n equals 0, then n equals 5 on one side, and then n equals 5 on the other side. So that gives a total number of beams... to be 11. Hopefully didn't get caught out with that one. So let's finish with a little bit of practice. Let's complete this. Let's pause, complete these, and then I'll just give you the answers. So we're just utilizing the D sine theta equals N lambda equation. D is in micrometers, which is the distance between two individual lines, n is the number of lines per millimeter. So let's go with the answers. So 500, 11.5 degrees, 500. Remember it's lines per millimeter, so you just do a millimeter, one times 10 to the minus three divided by two times 10 to the minus six. Remember micro is to the minus six. So 500 again. The angle, 23.6 degrees. Next one, 500 again, obviously, because D is the same. The angle for this instance, 53.1 degrees. The next one, so that'll be a millimetre divided by 200 to give you D, 5 micrometres. The angle for the second order, 9.21 degrees. The last one, get 2.5 micrometres, 2.5 to the minus 6. And for the fifth order, we have a wavelength of 250 nanometers. So a bit of a long lesson that one, but hopefully you enjoyed it and or learnt something. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.